Hi there. In this video we're going to be showing you how to coat a flatless fingerboard. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do this. You can use epoxy, like uh, Jacko did, as you may know about. And that's probably the most common way is using epoxy. And then there's polyester, which you have to have square equipment for. And then the final way, which is what we're doing today, is CA glue, which stands for cyanoacrylate glue. Uh, but to you and me, that's super glue. So it's, the, it's not important what type of glue you use, the viscosity is what matters. And that's what we're going to be using in this video. It's probably the most straightforward out of the three. And it gives still just as good results. And it doesn't alter the sound as much as some of the other ones can. Yeah. And why would you want to coat a fingerboard? Well, that's just to stop the wear from the round wound strings. If you want to use flat wounds, it's fine. You don't normally get any damage in, on your fretboard. But with round wound strings, you can get the, eventually get the little grooves from the strings and marks from it. And when, but CA glue is typically harder than most fretboards, even ebony. Uh, so that's going to prevent that happening. So that's why we're doing it. And we're going to get on with that now. The base we're doing it on has a Blackwood Tech fingerboard, which is actually pretty hard anyway. But the problem we had with it is when you were fretting over the lines, you'd have a slightly different tone come off it than you would off the board itself. So that's another reason why you might want to coat a fingerboard. Uh, so that's why we're going super glue on this one. And so here we go. So these are the brushes I use for applying the glue. Uh, you, they're called poly brushes or foam brushes. And uh, they're normally used for applying polyurethane, but they work well for this. Um, I, you only get one use out of each bit of it. So what I do is I use it and then I end up cutting it off with the scissors. It's got like a plastic liner on the inside of it also. Uh, so you have to cut that back. There's one I've used before. You see that plastic in there. You cut that back also, and then you cut that back behind this. So then you get a few different uses. This one was much bigger before. It was out here and I've cut, used it on it, both sides and on the tip. So you can get four or five uses off just one brush and they're cheap anyway. They're something like a five or four set. Uh, but they work well. Uh, they didn't get a nice smooth coat off them. So I repeated that process about six times, about six coats of glue on there now, um, and then I leveled it off. Uh, in between coats, I was just doing a minor sanding with the little eraser, and that was just to just smooth it out a bit. It wasn't to do a full level. Uh, so I was just taking off any little dust nibs or anything else that had fallen on it and smoothing it out a bit. But I didn't do a proper level until I got to the full six coats, which is what I've done now. And I've done that with 500 grit sandpaper and a long sanding block, just like you would on a normal fretless board. Um, so filing down the string pass with the block. And then I've worked through the grits and stopped at where I could no longer see any sending scratches, but it hadn't got too glossy because I didn't want a too glossy fretboard on this one uh, because it wouldn't have suited the rest of the instrument. So this is where we've stopped. It has got quite a lot of sheen to it, just like it did have before, uh, but it's not like a mirror, which it would go to if we wanted, but we don't want that. Uh, so next I'm gonna put the strings on and see how it sounds. Mm -hmm. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. There should be another video going up on this same base, which goes over the features in a bit more detail. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. And um, thanks again for watching. <laughs>